Our next speaker is Chris uh, Jan Kulowski. Chris is the founder and CEO of Remote Staff, a pioneering home-based remote working agency founded in 2007. Since then, it has enabled over 8,000 Filipinos to work remotely with 2,500 foreign employers. Remote staff currently employs 700 home-based professionals. Let's help me welcome a true warrior, Mr. Chris Yabolovsky. Good morning, Philippines. Hello. This is awesome. This is awesome because I've never been Filipino facing before. I've always spoken to the foreign employers. It's awesome to speak to the Filipino people. Do you know that I've been devoted for the last 12, 13 years believing in you, representing you to the foreign world? And the world has embraced Filipino talent. Never before than now. Right now, it's a global phenomenon. And what's best is that the world loves Filipino talent. So, I'm glad that the world's catching up because I've believed in you guys for a long time and I want to honour you guys for being here, for making that decision, that step to say, you know what, I'm going to do something about designing my life. I want to, maybe you are currently working freelancing or from home, you want to advance that. Or, you want to make this choice and say, I want to know what it's like to work from home and I want to be a professional from home. Well, I want to honour you for being here first. So, welcome. Uh, I have to also say a special thank you to all the crew here uh, because I think they've done an amazing job. And I have to also thank my wonderful wife, wherever she is. I can't quite see her here. But thank you, Rika. I think. Uh, me and, me, me and my wife are very passionate towards this cause of wanting to make a difference, in particular, to the Filipino people. One of the biggest things when I've confronted with so many near-death battles, I've, I've fought cancers, brain operations, and all these things, and every time I fight these battles, I come out with um, this hunger. Instead of like relaxing and going, oh, I just had a second brain operation, half my body doesn't work, my kidney, I've only got half a kidney, all this trouble. Maybe I should back off. I, I seem to do the other thing. Every time they nearly kill me, I seem to get up whenever I get over these challenges. And I want to press that accelerator, take on life even more, to do more. I'm hungrier. I get hungrier. <laughs> so I'm a very hungry person right now. <laughs> uh, um, I'm trying to get away from that light because I'm going to see you all. But I can't see you because I've got this bright light. <laughs> I can't run away from it either. So, shall we commence? So today's goal is to help you be prepared. To be prepared of the pros and cons, the challenges of remote working. And then tomorrow we will be discussing the types of jobs you can get from freelancing, independent contractor, remote worker. What are the differences? What are the similarities? What are the options for you? What's right for you? We'll be discussing these things tomorrow. So, but for today, today is a, a good fun session because today I'm also going to talk a little bit about my personal story. That in itself is a massive story. Thanks for the lights dimming a little bit. <laughs> now I can see you a little bit better. Um, my personal story is quite unique and I'll start with that. Um, let's see. I'll leave it on this slide for a second. Um, in 2004 was when my remote working dream happened. I was working with a friend who understood the digital landscape, the online world. I didn't understand it at the time. I was a typical business guy in the offline world. <laughs> and so I wanted to understand this digital world because I loved that idea of traveling the world, not saving for money, traveling the world and coming back home broke. But I wanted to travel the world and get wealthier in the process. I wanted to enjoy working from anywhere, shut my laptop down and go, hey Paris, I'm here today. It's awesome. And then what's even more better is when I look in my bank account and go, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going broke, it's awesome. Um, so that way I can enjoy. So for me, my remote style dream first started with the idea of saying, let's just travel everywhere. And I did for about a decade. And yes, my wife was with me everywhere. Um, 
And, and one of the things that I've learned from this journey is that when you're remotely working and you get there like a typical tourist, you realize, what's the rush? <laughs> I'm not in a hurry to, to, to run around and see all these things. And so we just timed down first. Hey, there's my wife. Hello. <laughs> Rick, uh, um, so, yes, I'm still a love bug. Um, so, we, we, we went to places. We enjoyed ourselves for six weeks at a time. We found that six weeks was the sweet spot where we could settle in. Imagine being in England or Paris or Dubai or God knows where, and you're there for six weeks. You can really immerse in the culture. You can really understand their worldview. You can really see what people queue up in the lines at bread shops in, in, um, in uh, Port, uh, Portugal. You know, it's fascinating to explore the world. It's such a big world out there. Or oh, it's such a fascinating world to explore the Philippines and Southeast Asia in general, it's awesome. There's so many ways that one can remotely work. So I'm a fan of remote working. That's an awesome dream. I can talk about it all day, but I better tone down. <laughs> um, I want to now share very briefly remote staff and how remote staff came to form. So in 2004, I had that dream of remote working. Now I've got double the lights. Okay, so I can't skip the lights. Um, so. And when I when I dis, when I learned that uh, more about this remote working landscape and I understood the potentials, then what I realised was you know this is very 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 viable. Um, but something happened. I had a brain operation. I was having these headaches. I had the operation. I got scanned on a on a Tuesday, and they said oh, on the Thursday you're going to have a brain operation. I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa. this is in 2005. I go whoa. whoa. You mean someone's going to cut into my head? They're going to enter my mind space? Are you for real? No way, man. They go, that. we discovered a big five centimeter tumor, and you have to have an urgent operation. As a matter of fact, it's so urgent that you let this loose too long. If you just have one bad session in the toilet or trip or something, you're a dead man. So, so right away, when I had the operation, I'm all good. I came out okay. I'm alive. But I'm in the hospital lying there, and they said, Chris, with your hereditary condition that prone to cysts and tumors, you need to get yourself checked every year. And I do. I manage it now. But back then, when you're in your 20s, you just, you, you know, you think you live forever. Anyway. Uh, and you think, ah, doctors, rubbish, DNA stuff. What are you talking about? I didn't believe it. <laughs> anyway, so when I'm in the hospital, just had the brain operation, they discovered I'm riddled with cancers. Yes? Riddle with cancers. The, they removed my right kidney two months later. They said I had these tumors here, four at the time. So two months later, they take that out. I had these cancers with me for almost a decade. And then they wanted to do stuff with my left kidney. I said, guys, hold off, hold off. I'm a dead man as it is. So I'm taking a year off. I'm taking a year off. I'm taking 2006 off. Hey, if you've only got a little bit of time left to live in this world, the currency of life is time, yeah? So I wanted to do something with whatever time I had. I didn't know how much time I had to live. So I took the year off. I traveled the world. My second chance in life was to take a year off an online date and have fun with women everywhere. <laughs> so that was my second chance to life as a younger man in 2006. Yes, I enjoyed the world. I went anywhere, wherever there was an online date inside and dates lined up before I rocked up. What a way to explore worlds. You know, go to China and miss Shanghai and take you to restaurants and culture museums. That what a way to travel. Anyway, that's my 2006. But in that process, I, I, I managed to come to the Philippines. Aww. Now, I wasn't looking for love, but I found love. <laughs> I got the love book. So, I found in love with a Filipina. It wasn't just physical, it was mental, spiritual, emotional, it was so connected. And I fell in love with the country, I fell in love with the people. I was like, wow, look how hard working, look how committed, family orientated they are, how... There's so many lovely things, there's tropical landscape, I like that too. Uh, it's nice to be a little bit taller than everyone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, it was all awesome, I loved it. It was new, different for me. but. I, I went back after the year, I went back to Australia. 
and I'm working away as a marketing consultant and somebody goes to me, uh, Chris, now it's time for my kidney doctor, he goes, now it's time to operate these other four tumors, uh, cancers. And he's gonna be left with a third of a kidney. And I said to him, Doc, listen, Mr. Doc, mate, <laughs> how much time do I have left with my original kidney? He goes, maybe two years, maybe 10. No, 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 that's a big difference. I want to know how long do I have a half a kidney to live with or a third of a kidney? He goes, if you look after yourself and whatever, you might get 10. I get done. You give me 10 years, Mr. Doc, and I am going to employ thousands of people. I just felt like I could do a noble pleasure or something. <laughs> I thought I was bargaining for my life again. And he, he looks at me, the doctor looks at me and goes, what are you talking about? It's, you know, it's my job to look after you. What are you why are you making a pledge to me? So he dismissed it, he carried on. And before I walked out the door, he asked, Chris, how many people do you employ? I go, none. <laughs> and that was in uh, late November of 2007. So since then, we've employed 8,000 Filipinos exclusively focused on working remotely from home. So we love it. So I've lived up to the pledge. Ah, <laughs> very, very happy. I need an applause. Come on. I want to hear it. The reason why I've requested for this applause is because I'm still committed. As a matter of fact, I'm so committed that I'm committing my life to representing Filipino talent to the world. How's that? So, now, shall we commence? <laughs> the PowerPoint slide. Let's see. Forward. There we go. Okay. Since I started in, in late 2007, what I found fascinating is that at the beginning, everyone was like so suspicious and doubtful about this whole thing. I don't know, can you, how can you make it work? Are you crazy? All these other friends in the BPO space are going, mate, you mean you're going to trust the Filipino to work from home for a foreigner from their home with bad infrastructure, drop out into the country, bad equipment, all the other year? For sure. Have you seen the traffic here? <laughs> He's like, I don't know. <laughs> it makes sense, hello. Anyway, so it made sense back then, it makes even more sense now, and it's even more important now. So in Melbourne, where I'm originally born and raised, the Melbourne Infrastructure Organisation, whoever they are, they did a survey just earlier this year, and they discovered that in Melbourne at the moment, because like the Tertes Act in December 2018 for remote working in this country, uh, finally government's acknowledging it, um, in Melbourne, the Remote Working Act has been there a little bit longer. And right now, that, that they discovered that 64% of workers today in Melbourne are working 1.1 days a week average from home. That's city workers, 64%. We are at the 50% mark. That's huge. This is a trend, guys. This is a future that's coming here. Don't take this decision lightly, what you're doing right now. Committing to say, I want to advance my working career here, or I want to start this remote working career. Do not treat that decision lightly. It's a future. It's the future of employment for a lot of people. Okay. The goal today is to help you prepare. Let's review those pros and cons. So, we know what we know, we know what we don't know, kind of. But I'm hoping that today you'll get an exposure to what you know, what you don't know, and maybe you might be exposed to things that you might have not known that you don't know. So let's start with the top 10 remote working challenges. <laughs> Apparently this lady is a Filipino, I just found out. Anyway. So, number one, this is the biggest fear for clients. Don't, it's, not, it's not a Filipino thing, it's just their concern with, hang on a minute, I've got staff, or maybe I don't have staff and I want a staff, but how the hell do I hire a, a remote worker in the Philippines? Or a remote worker in Australia, or a remote worker anywhere? How do I build this culture? How do I know that that, that person, when I'm over here in Australia, is going to give a, is going to give a damn about whatever we're doing and the com company we're servicing? How do I know this? How am I going to make this 
a viable trusted relationship, it's a tough gig. That's one of their biggest anxieties. Now, the tip is very simple. The tip is do what you can outwards to integrate to them. If you're here, sorry, <laughs> I'm visual. If you're here to a client, hey Mr. Client, just try your best to understand his customers, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to stand for, what they're trying to pull off, what they're <coughs> trying to do. Just get yourself involved. Because if you don't, they may or may not. But guess what? If they don't get you involved and they don't know how to plug you in, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be proactive to maybe shoot off some emails or messages. You need to know what's going on here. Why? Because you need to not just um, yeah. take for granted the trust given to you by being employed. You've got to honor that trust. You've got to sustain that thread of trust that you've been given as a remote worker to work for that client, that foreign employer. Mm. This is one of the ways you do it. Do your best to integrate. When they know, <laughs> I shouldn't have gone so far. <laughs> when, when they know that you're showing an interest in what they do, their business, their customers, they know you've got their, co their back covered. They're gonna wanna invest more in you. That's good, that's a good thing. The more they invest in you, the more they plug you in as a team member, the more they honor you as not just another co-worker. Now, you're part of the team, man. There's a difference there. Your home working career is secure. As a matter of fact, many relationships that we've placed have lasted already a decade longer with the same one client, same staff. Ten years. Fascinating journey, yeah? So, here's some little things. And by the way, we'll, we'll make these slides available. I know they're quite a lot, but we'll make them available on our website soon, I'm sure. Hello, my marketing team, somebody. Let's uh, <laughs> make sure that they're available. RemoteStaff.com.ph forward slash uh, uh, the conference name, <laughs> working remote or remote working. And off you go. And you'll see it there. So integrate. Number two. Second thing I'll put here is the Philippine culture, Western culture difference. It's different. When you're here, and you're talking to somebody, he's telling you something, he's telling you an instruction, and you're going, yes, Paul, yes, sir. <laughs> hey, what the hell did he just say? You're seriously stuffing up. Because this person, he just interpreted your word, yes, as, oh, okay, they understood, I, I, should, I don't have to explain anymore, they, got, they kind of got it. If you didn't ask questions, or if you don't follow up with some other questions later, you're in danger. So this is one of the skills you need to learn. It doesn't mean speak up. It just means if you're not clear about something, it's okay to ask. Remember, you're on the same team. So this one is a ex, uh, it's an inward thing. Share to you. Filipino. Share to him photos of your coffee that you're having this morning. Your breakfast if you want. Whatever, just anything. Hey, these are my challenges that I'm struggling with at the moment. I've got so many things to do. Uh, I think my priority should be this and that. Keep them in the loop. Just share what's going on in your world. So the first slide was about you sharing an interest in them. The second slide is about you trying to encourage an interest about you to them. Let them know who you are. Don't be shy of them. They want to. They've just employed you. They've just trusted you to work from home. Why don't they want to know who you are? Okay. Uh, wow. Well, eh? Time is our most valuable resource. I mentioned that a second ago. Doesn't matter if you're rich. Doesn't matter if you're poor. Guess what? We've all got the same time. But in this country, there's a couple of things that I'm always fascinated about. First, I'm going to do an example right now. <laughs> First, people walk bloody slow. <laughs> they walk so slow. I'm always in a hurry. I, I, I recognize the scarcity of my time. I'm always fighting tumors and battling life battles. I recognize that my time is finite. I'm not here forever. I don't know how long I've got. I never do. As a matter of fact, I live year by year. So when I'm in this country and I see how people are just so casual with their time, I just look at them and go, 
you don't know what you're missing out on. Because if you can manage time, Mr. Filipino, if you can manage your time better, if you know that the times, when you start your day when you work remotely and it just disappears, what did you do to create a bit of a structure to manage that time? Did you make any effort to say, okay, well, I, I, I will put a structure to keep my focus at the morning to do this and the afternoon to do that because guess what? Your time management skills is the difference between you living a life that you desire and you living a life that you're making a decision to go after. Success is not about your bank account or how many cars or God knows what kind of security or how family you feed or that's not success. Success is you creating a painting of your life drawing whichever way you want, making choices about whatever you want, and saying that you are doing something about it and you're pulling it off. Whatever that life represents for you, you pulled it off. And hey, you're successful. And you guys are here because you're saying that, hey, I want to work from home. And working from home is not about just a job and financial security. It's so much more than that. Look at who you have to become to take on these adversities and challenges. These tips that I'm giving you, like structure regarding your time management, they're gonna be things in practice. They're things that are gonna evolve. So be mindful that these are remarkable life skills. Um, this is your decision to work from home, or if you are working from home, is a proactive step to say, I'm gonna design my life and I'm gonna do something about fulfilling it. Let's bring that on. Communication, yes, communication. Everyone talk about communication. It's so easy to misunderstand when you're in halfway around the world. If you're not, if there's a foreigner talking too fast or is a very thick Australian accent, lucky I've got a neutral one. Anyway, if you, and still Australian, but let's say you're talking to a foreign employer and you don't understand him very well. He gives you, you're so excited. Like imagine this, you're filtering, you're so excited. Yeah, I'm going to be a remote worker. Woo! And then you're talking to the client. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> He's giving you all this responsibility. Oh, I should this this way. Vague instructions. Now what? So, tip, a line. Anytime you don't understand this guy or is giving you too much responsibilities and it hasn't been clear, you must speak up. You must say, like, hey man, like, okay, I, I can't get it, get off the call, maybe it's more comfortable for Philippine and not necessarily to interact straight with that, but it's better that you do. But anyway, if it's not, shoot off an email, do something, whatever's appropriate for your work style. Because your, your communication, you guys gotta get on the same page with this person. It's a must. Or there, if you're a part of a team, you gotta get connected to the remote manager of that employer. If you're not understanding each other properly, seriously, it, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's one of the biggest things we've seen where employers lose out on this dream of saying, oh my God, it's so expensive to employ people in Australia. Oh wow, look at the Filipino, the, the, the economic of scales, this is awesome. Yes, I can finally not be under-resourced, I, I can actually have resources. Yeah, this is an amazing thing. But what gets this guy to quit? This, this guy to quit in you? What we notice, it's often this. Because the Filipino is here. They sound amazing, they talk really good, but they're not comprehending. They're not following up with questions, or they're not quite on the same page. This guy's trying, trying to help, trying to help, because he knows when you succeed and you become all that you can become, it's better for the business. Because behind every business, there are people. And, behind, and, and, and any business is only as good as their people. So real employers know that they need to make an investment in their people. But then that's disheartening when you're trying so hard and they don't get you. It's pointless exercise trying to help them out. So communication is critical. By the way, we've hired people that we've hired that their English isn't that good but they've done something proactively to, to make an attempt to understand. Hey, sir, I didn't quite get what you said. Can you just say it again in an email? Awesome. At least they did that. They're still employed decades later. 
Rawability. Hmm. Fascinating. There are employers, which I've met so many. Some have monitoring technology, some don't. The ones that don't manage their remote workers through this reliability, saying, hey, Mr. Filipino, Filipina, here, take on this job. Sure, okay, I understand it. What's the deadline? <laughs> What's the deadline? Deadline, what an important word. Because these people manage each other through deadlines. That's one way some of these employers do it, who don't use monitoring technologies or agencies. They use deadlines. They, they say, you own this job. You do it, I'll support you, whatever you need, but you're doing it. This person is gonna do nothing effective if they don't know what the deadline is. And if they know what the deadline is, this person is gonna do nothing if they're not sharing their progress, if there's no, if there's no working. So, okay. Performance of productivity. Remember I said time is our currency of life? Well, in business, it's productivity. Productivity is the currency of an employer and employee relationship. You've got to be productive to be viable, to be employed. So, I love when you ask that old saying, you want to learn how to be productive? Go give a job to a very busy person, <laughs> give them more. They just do more. Because they know, they've already got that structure, that routine, those habits to take on more, to do more. So I urge you, take on more. Routines set you free. Trust me, when you've got routines going on with your productivity, you will surprise yourself. Okay, simple, basic, but it is a challenge. Time zone. Man, when you're working for a US client, or Australian client, or UK client, <laughs> Wow, you know the time zone is about to change in Australia in August, uh, in October. Everyone's going to start at 6 a.m. That doesn't mean you wake up 5.55 and start at 6. <laughs> you know, you need to be in bed by about 9. You need to be up by about 5, 5.30, 5.20 and be ready for 6. Um, this sleep, staying healthy, is important a lot more than you realize because you're in a vehicle, this biological body of yours. <laughs> you need to maintain it, you need to look after it, hydrate it, service it, and most importantly, get the sleep you need. So you can focus and be productive, apply yourself. Yes, it's very basic common sense, isn't it? <laughs> I can't tell you how many people you don't. When I, when I walk around and I see people sleeping on their breaks, and they're really sleeping, like there's no like, I need about 30 minutes to to, to knock out, no, I, they're sleeping straight away, it's phenomenal. That tells me that they are under, they haven't slept enough. Get your seven, eight hours sleep, go for it. Don't underestimate it, it's really important. Security and privacy, it's funny. In the Philippines, there's somehow no concept of the idea that you're talking to someone about something that's commercially sensitive meaning do not share it in a public setting. Don't be at a coffee shop or somewhere in a co-working space talking loudly about something commercially sensitive. Be mindful of that. Or you're working on a free internet connection somewhere. Do you know it's extremely easy to see what anyone around you is looking on their screens at any time? Be careful. What if you're doing something very sensitive and somebody sees it? Oh, you know, bank accounts? Yes, we've had one hack. Okay. Distractions, how awesome. You're working from home, of course you're gonna get distractions. Rooster, neighbor, people, taho, God knows what. Somebody is gonna distract you. But these are nothing compared to something else called loneliness, isolation. The internet itself, they're distractions, big distractions. How easy is it to get carried around basketball news or something and then realize, oh, it's already been one hour. Or, you're, you're, you're just not in the groove because you just haven't spoken to a human being for about three days. And you're just, you can't get over this isolation moments. You can't, it affects your focus. And also, you, instead of working really productively and efficiently and effective, it's dragged out. 
and you're not getting anywhere. You're not making enough progress. So watch out. When you feel that, when you feel that, go get support. And if you can't get support, this is a very, very real tip that I'm about to say. It's very, very important. And I really mean it. Get out of your house. <laughs> we all else fails. Seriously. Like, at the end of the day, if you can't break out of the state that you're in because of loneliness and isolation, seriously, get the hell out. Because when you get out, you're going to freshen your mind, you're going to get some fresh air, you're going to shift your focus, you're going to maybe speak to somebody. That little casual conversation is all you need to feel good. Okay, next. Client-facing skills. Ah, that's funny. This last one. Alpha. Direct. A challenging person. I will confront anyone to, to challenge. Yeah. So, and I want to challenge anyone, especially my workers. Why? Because that's how you grow. So what are these client-facing skills? Well, remember, I just covered many of them. But just remember, you're on the same team. So if they're, if they're intimidating, they talk too fast, and all this kind of stuff, just remember, you're on the same team, you're halfway around the world, they're not going to be able to bite you. <laughs> but you've got to understand, how do I build trust? How do I build a relationship with this person? Moving on. Very quickly now, I'll run through the benefits of you. Very few. You're going to be more productive. Well, what I love most is, other than the uh, sick leaves and all that, that there is a link, <laughs> uh, is that deep, uninterrupted work. It's so awesome when you've got something in your mind, you've wanted to do it, and then you're there and you're in the zone. You're getting it done. Just sent. Huh? Done. <laughs> it's awesome. You can do that. When you're in an office, you've got distractions. Hey, come to this meeting, or this or that, or... But at home, there is, you're the only person that's controlling your, this bubble of focus. And then when you control that bubble of focus, it's amazing how productive you can get when you go to deep work. So that's why remote workers are generally more productive, especially those that have gained experiences and control their focus. If you've got control of your focus, you're a powerful person. All right, these are all the lifestyles, but I'm going to touch on one point, happier life. I think Mark, uh, the speaker before, just touched on it. Happy life in a nutshell. Natters, your desire to be happy should be at the front. Because when you're happy, you're going to be more productive. You're going to be better. You're going to, you're going to seriously excel. So being happy really matters. Because we have only got this one life. And when are we going to be happy? Don't put off your happiness. Make it a priority. It matters much more than you realize. Because when you are happier, I believe as Mark mentioned, you, 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 you really are going to excel. You're going to, you're going to become more. You're going to be, and, and look at all those awesome benefits. Eh? The lifestyle benefits I don't need to cover. I think we all know about it. But let's just say, the, 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 we've done the calculation, it's very basic. Do you know just getting out of the commute, an hour and a half each way averages, that's a one month a, a year in your life back. How much can you upskill yourself or socialize or be with your family or do so much? This is time, the most valuable resource we have. Getting out of the commute, drama, uh, is the most incredible thing you can do here. You win back a time, you have such an advantage. But this is what everyone doesn't see. Do you know that when you're a self-employed professional, this is what's amazing. When you're a self-employed professional, yeah, you've got a job. Woo, you've got a job. You've got an income. But what's most important is, I'll do it over here. When you're a self-employed professional, when you've been working remotely from home, and you've gained experience and exposure of those 10 ch talent challenges and you've overcome them, do you know that those are the stepping building blocks that you've got to acquire skills? Yes, my balance is effective, but anyway. You've got to... You, you gotta, you gotta, Make that progress to become one day a business person, an entrepreneur. These are really powerful attributes and skills. So many people that we've employed from a long time ago, and some of you here in this room, have moved on from their remote working jobs and now doing their own businesses and things because they've attained the skills. And what a great way to get these skills. You have not 
the, don't have the entrepreneurial way. Entrepreneurial way is here, where you get knocked out, you gotta stand up, you gotta broke, you did this, you completely snuffed it. It's a really painful, expensive learning. But as a self-employed professional, you get to attain these amazing skills of managing your time, managing your priorities, understanding how to deal and operate in deadlines, how to communicate. You, you see, it's like a train. These are really powerful skills. So remote working is not just about lifestyle, it's about this future, an exciting future. It's an investment you're making. Done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, so we have here a certificate of appreciation. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and picture. Yeah. <laughs> this certificate of appreciation is presented to Chris Yagulovsky for inspiring hundreds of Filipino remote workers to take action in reaching their dreams and lifestyle. Thousands. Thousands. <laughs> Working Remote Conference 2019 held at SMX Hawala Convention Center. This date, September 13 and 14, 2019, signed by Rika Jankolovsky, our CEO, of Paystop and Remote Staff. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. Guys, Remote Staff is sponsoring 55 slots for a fun networking night at Prego Territoria at the fifth floor. So, yeah, so that's free pizza and beer for you. So, just visit the booth. Just 55 slots, so yeah. senior slots at the booth. I, I thought it's important to network amongst each other because yeah. often in these events, you, it's amazing you know, the support that you can build amongst yourselves. Enjoy. Thank you. See you. Ah, wifey! <laughs> Put the update the Wife, just a correction. I am not the CEO of remote staff. <laughs> I'm the CEO of working remote and pay staff. Sorry, he's a bit confused. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so yeah, uh, everything that Chris said earlier, yung mga nag-aspire mag-freelancer, totoo yun. Uh, been working as a freelancer for three years now, and those...